Um, thank you. I'd li also like to thank the organisers, and I've got the honour of um, capturing you with a PowerPoint presentation now. But um, I'm actually going to whip through this PowerPoint presentation and give you a rough idea of what I've been doing and the problem that I've found a solution for. The problem, here we go, this is the first problem, it won't work. You have 25 seconds left yeah, to you. solve it. <laughs> the problem uh, results, uh, as far as the World Health Organization report, in one death every 24 seconds. This is actually twice the rate that occurs from malaria around the world. 23 million cases of hepatitis, God knows how many cases of HIV. It is a really awful problem. But it is this, it is the humble procedure of an injection being given every single day. In fact, millions being given every single hour around the world that causes this problem and these terrible results. This situation here of an unqualified younger boy, a quack, delivering to this older man in full trust this particular procedure is the one that really caught my attention. In India at the moment, 62% of all injections are unsafe. These three children that I met in an orphanage in the north of Delhi were all HIV positive. They'd all been infected by a syringe. And even sadder, they were all orphans because their family couldn't handle the diagnosis that they had HIV children and in their embarrassment put them out on the street. Two of these children are no longer with us. In Africa, there's a high reporting of fever after an injection, which comes from the pathogens on the needle and in the syringe. And it's estimated that tens of millions of injections are given, which already have blood on the needle, which is infected with the HIV virus. Similar story, Pakistan, 70% of the injections are insafe, unsafe, but a terrible element in that 90% of these injections are seen as unnecessary. It's perhaps the success of white man's medicine, if you'll excuse the phrase, which has told the developing world that we can cure their ills. And to my observations, they're turning away from traditional um, resources and wholly reliant on this procedure of injections. And I'm sure that our Indian friends will agree with me that a doctor is no good if he's not giving an injection. Oral medicine is not acceptable. And recently, a number which may be controversial is that the, this problem of unsafe injections results in a cost, a total cost around the world every year of somewhere over $100 billion. A fraction of that is healthcare, and two-thirds of that is lost production. There are three elements that make up this issue. There's reuse, and here you can see an absolutely charming lady that I met in Islamabad. Um, she had been treated for these burns that you can see on her face. And during that treatment, 10 years before, she had actually contracted hepatitis B in this very room. And she couldn't see the irony that she was now being treated for this condition that she had caught in this actual place 10 years before. This is a common scene that I see. A bowl of lukewarm water, needles, take your pick. It's sort of a way that these quacks and doctors absolve themselves of guilt. Oh, you picked the wrong one. Bad luck. This doctor admitted to me using this syringe 25 times in a day and then held it up. And then I hit him after I took the photograph. Syringes and needles are used like scissors and pens and kept on the desk for constant use. This is the world record holder. Um, this one, you can see the ink has worn off the barrel. And by doing that, I will estimate that this has been used over 100 times. Now, these are loads of facts and figures. I'm not really a report reader or a report writer. What I do is I work a lot on anecdotal evidence, and I'd just like to show you this short video, which was taken undercover in, in India, and it will explain everything much clearer. There is a soundtrack, but I don't turn it up because I'll talk you through it. This is a public hospital in uh, Faridabad, south of Delhi. There are 42 people on this ward, and they're all being injected. You can see the tray there with all the medicines on. They're being injected with 42... There's 42 injections taking place with two syringes. Not at one time do we see in the half hour period of this footage a needle being taken out of a packet. And you can see the nurse now returning to this tray and throwing the syringe back in it, picked up again and then used on this unsuspecting patient. And no one notices. No one says, excuse me doctor, excuse me nurse, are you doing something wrong there? Because the nurse has a position of power and no one wants to challenge them in this case. 
recycling. I'm sure you've read about this in the newspaper where syringes are weighed and they're washed and sold. And here's some examples. Again in India, I'm sorry to go on about India, but lots of the camera was working. A bath built outside a, a, a hospital, and this is the scale of syringes which are being washed. Of course they're infected, and the water that's being used to clean them is infecting all the other products. They were, they were then dried in the sun and taken upstairs for use the next day. Children collecting syringes early in the morning in Pakistan. These are her brothers. Together, they have a recycling business, and... The syringes are prized because they can be washed and made to look good and resold. But during this process, of course, these kids are exposed to sharp injuries and cuts and grazes and stuff, which are incredibly dangerous for them. But you can see the scale of the wholesale arrangement by packaging them up in, on this donkey cart and taking them off where they have a, a, a reassembled and they're made to look like a new product. And the other area is misuse, the third area. And in misuse, we've got an example from Indonesia, one of the most bizarre things I ever saw, where on a toy stand, there are 200,000 schools in Indonesia. All of them have a toy stand in the playground. Here are a packet of syringes. And, of course, they're valuable. They're next to the diggers and the, the pop guns and everything else. But these are valuable because they have a very um, exciting game that they play of water pistols. And they have great fun and they're all giggling and laughing and they have complex scoring systems and they know, they've really got it down. The only trouble is that they drink from them during the break because it's hot and they might have a cut on their hand, etc. But what we wanted to do was find out where these came from. Who was putting them in these bags on the, on the stand, on, on the toy sellers? You can see here that there's some dried blood on the back of the syringe. So we went to the toy seller and found out what was going on. And basically, the woman who owned it didn't know it was dangerous, actually said to me, uh, oh, well, we get brought a bag every single day which are recycled and, and uh, re medical equipment which is used, and we recycle it into toys. And it was her children who were actually standing at the back of the warehouse washing these things and drying them on, on a daily basis. The problem? Normal syringes. A normal syringe is five cents, it's incredibly simple to manufacture and to use, but it is used as a loss leader. And this is incredibly complex basis to this problem. And I won't go into it because I don't have time, but if you want to know what I'm talking about, please come and find me. Basically, there's no value to the device manufacturers for making these products because they use them to get market share on which they sell much higher margin products. I started in 1984 when I was 23 years old by reading a newspaper article which identified that this could be a problem. The solution that I thought had to exist had to be made on existing equipment. That way we could take away bad product and replace them with good ones. There should be no increase in cost because goodness knows the world is under enough pressure and we didn't need to raise it to another retail level. And if they could be used in the same way, we would have an amazing uh, product on our hands. And the solution that I invented is called K1. And uh, these are just some CAD drawings of what it looks like. And it has a valve molded into the plunger. And it breaks after use. So just to show you, here's the syringe. And if you use it in the normal way and inject, if you try and reuse it, if you pull it, it locks and then breaks. And you can't reuse it again rattling through. Two minutes. This is um, an illustration of the, the price. This was the first syringe I ever saw being made. And since then, 2001, we were able to sell about 3 billion of these products and save around 10 million infections from occurring, which could have been fatal. Just one little example. In Temeki Hospital, where we use these syringes, um, completely changed over the hospital to these syringes for a five-year period. We found at the end of it, by going back and doing the, probably the only survey I've ever done, that the inpatient stay, by just changing the, the, to safe syringes, dropped from seven days down to three. Also, the nurses developed a pride about what they were doing and started washing their hands without any uh, coercing at all. They just started voluntarily doing that. And I'm going to end off here because I can feel that I'm uh, coming out of time. But the final thing was that for every 20 syringes that were used in this period, and that 20 would have cost $1, the hospital administrator told us on review that he was saving $280 
for every dollar spent. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine a simple little product like a syringe that you can't use anymore and imagine that being rolled out across the world and the effect that that would have. It would be absolutely incredible. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you.